All right, time now is 11.38 on August 24th. Yeah. So, uh, slept from 4.50 to 11, and then I went back to sleep for half more hour. I had a lot of dreams, and it's all one gigantic mess. It's me editing a video live, like filming someone driving a car and then editing a video live. I think I dreamed about going back to Hong Kong again. It's just a bunch of stuff. So yeah, I still can't for the life of me sleep earlier. I went to bed at 4.50, but I just couldn't immediately fall asleep. I think I'm gonna take a couple pills tonight. Oh, never mind. My melatonin is gone. Shit. Okay. <sighs> well, I don't know. I'm gonna try to just go to bed earlier tonight, I guess. For 4 a.m. perhaps. 4 a.m. Let's set the goal to 4 a.m. Um. Yeah, so I, um. Mmm, God. So today's gonna be the last day I'm gonna spend my time in this apartment. Uh, not feeling very happy about it. Not really, no. So here's the plan. I don't have any reviews to do today. I'm gonna continue to do back packing. I'm gonna pack up all my clothes. I think that's the first thing I'm gonna do. Um, pack up all my clothes. I'm gonna start cleaning up the cabinets as well. And uh, I'm gonna clean up this little layer of shit. And then, yeah, if I take care of these three things, I think I would have reached like 70% of all the stuff. Um, I'm gonna go to Nijio Market one last time in my lifetime, perhaps. Uh, I'm gonna buy a bunch of sushi, buy the best ones there is. I'm also gonna buy snacks because I realized that my my fridge right now is actually extremely empty. Like I don't have any meats other than some frozen pork slices, which I will eat up today for lunch. Um, and then I have no vegetables other than a little bit of green onion chives, a carrot and some bok choy. Like, I have barely anything inside the fridge right now, which is, um, you know, I don't know. Maybe I have under-calculated my own diet. Maybe I should have left a little more stuff. So I'm going to go and buy just a tiny snack thing in Nijia Market to just eat today as well, I think, or tomorrow. But also, um, tomorrow lunch, I realized that I want to make my move at night, like my total complete move somewhere at night, like maybe 6 p.m. ish, which means that I wanna go out and I, I'm gonna have lunch here as well. So I'm thinking why not uh, just, you know, eat Coco Ichibanya, you know, perfect opportunity. Originally I was like, let's do Subway Let's move over there and have lunch there, Subway. Um, and then I thought, well, actually, you know what? I'll just order Coco Ichibanya. So that's the plan. Tomorrow, I'll do the complete move. And then maybe for tomorrow night, because I have no food, I'm gonna do, um, I'm just gonna go to Ralph's and buy stuff. So tomorrow I'll make a move. And then shortly after unpacking, I'll go to Ralph's. And then I'll go home and I'll continue to unpack. And it's fine because Ralph is so damn close. And that's basically it. Um, for today, I'm excited to go to Amadeus at the Academy Museum later. So that's really cool. And yeah, no other news. Almost forgot to record my final time in uh, Nijia Market. <laughs> Fuck, I'm 
I'm like seven minutes late right now. Gotta go. Oh, the memories. This is exactly where I tried vape for the first time. <sighs> With them. as a young man. It's wonderfully achieved. Paul LeBlanc is a name I have to... Feels good to be standing here again. Okay, um, it's 1.37 a.m. A little bit interesting of a day. Uh, I don't, I may gonna have a phone call with Miles later for no reason whatsoever. Even though I kind of don't actually because I want to pack, but I also like talking to people so I don't really know. Um. All right, time now is 2.39, so um, okay, well, let's do this quick. So today is semi-interesting, I guess, uh, in August standards anyways. Um, I'm so thirsty for some reason. Uh, so yeah, today uh, was actually pretty productive. Like right off the bat after I woke up, I was immediately motivated to start doing shit. I immediately finished editing my college update video immediately edited my Gudon video um and then i was uh, in a bit of a time crunch i had to leave my apartment at 6 30 at the latest to catch amadeus at the academy museum um and i also want to go to nijia market to buy sushi for one last time a big feast for the pre-move eve you know the eve of my stay here um, 
and people fucking miss me for some reason. It's so stupid. So, um, Ashley knew that I had to move to Mars, and Ashley was like, "Oh, so you're today's your last day here, then." Ooh, are you sad? And I'm like, yeah, a little bit, you know. And it's true because this is the first place in LA where I've lived in for a long enough time that I've created some good memories here. Um, like, you know, this room. I laughed. I cried. I reacted to my, you know, film school admissions here. I. I did so many cool reviews there, you know. I cried on my bed. Um, you know, so so many memories actually. So it's it's kind of sad actually that I'm leaving. I guess the second thing is um. Yeah, I don't know. It's just I really settled here. So this room is lived in by me. You you can tell it's me. So yeah, it is sad. But anyways, I rushed to Ninja Market. Um, walked there within twelve minutes. Immediately bought a bunch of sushi and stuff. I didn't even film myself like taking our stuff out from the bag. But it's essentially just sushi box, onigiri, fried chicken karaage, tofu salad, all the good stuff. Plus a cream bun for tomorrow morning, um, and then I came back home and literally within twenty five minutes, I cooked, ate, and cleaned up an entire lunch. So I already pre cooked some rice before I left to Nijia Market, and I already started defrosting some pork slices, um, and um, yeah, and then essentially um. I friggin yeah I defrosted some pork slices and then I I left the Niger Market. I came back and I gave my I immediately cooked um um yellow onion. I chopped up the onions. I chopped up some garlic. Um, and I threw them in a pan, fried with oil, and then I dumped the pork slices in. And then added more oil, more rice that's already cooked, and then add an egg, and I just fried it. So a bit of a fried rice, if you will. And I ate it all up, stuffed it into my mouth, and then cleaned all the bowls and pans and whatever. So that was last night. Um, not last night. Fuck, I'm I'm too tired. I'm saying shit right now. I'm on autopilot. But yeah, I I finished in time in twenty five minutes. I immediately left off to Academy Museum, um, and I was like late for like ten minutes, but it's okay because the movie hasn't started. I don't know, and I, and then I watched it. It's a different theater. It's a different theater than the one I went to for the Last Emperor. Um, and this theater looks really interesting, and it's a pretty good cinematic experience. I I don't think the movie blew my mind or anything. But it was a really good experience, nonetheless. Um. Anyways, watched the movie. Immediate call to lift. Went back home. I low key thought that there's a chance that Leslie would be there. Um, but at last she isn't. She made an Instagram story today with Amaris, her Korean roommate. And they went to Disneyland together or something, so obviously she's not going to go to the fucking Amadeus. She probably considered it though. But uh, lo and behold, John L was there, but I didn't see him. I thought it was just me. After I left, when I was on the lift, John L texted me on WhatsApp saying, "Oh, I saw you, by the way." And I'm like, "Really?" And he's like, "Yeah, I was like." On the left, but you, you know, so yeah, that was interesting, but yeah. So I, I don't even know if Leslie will show up to Andrew's shoot or not. I kind of hope she does, but also not. Either way, it's bad. You know, the the best mentality to have is either way, it's bad. If Leslie's there, it's gonna be awkward. 
if Leslie's not there, kind of a shame because I really want to see her because I, I still like her, you know. But then again, I need to move on from her and I have been moving on from her. But it's just that I haven't seen her for so long. I need to like, I just really want to see her. But then also it's not healthy to see her anymore, you know. So I don't know. So either way, if she's an Andrew shoot or not, it's okay. Either way, Nadja is going to be there. So I will at least have someone to talk to. So that's cool, you know, and, and at least I'll get to like, I don't know, my like Ariel will be there too, I guess, I hope. I don't know, because if Cliff is dropping out, there's a chance that Leslie's all dropping out, and I really hope that that's not the case. But Andrew texted me today asking me if it's okay if um, I drive Alex to the set. And I told Andrew, I don't drive. And then Andrew's like, Oh, okay, then how about I pick you up? But I need to pick you up very early. The call time is like 10 a.m. But the film location is literally somewhere super far up north in the valley. Like, like almost near Castaic. Um, no, Castaic is like that way. I, I don't know geography of L.A., but it's super far up north. And so... Andrew was like, how about this? Alex goes to your place, meet up, you two meet up at 8 a.m. And then I pick you up. 8 a.m., fine. And then Alex told Andrew that he can't come to my place. So Andrew asked me, how about I pick you up at 7.40? And I'm like, okay, fine. Which means I'm getting no sleep at all. So, so tonight I really need to sleep at 4 a.m. at the latest. Um, and I wish I had melatonin pills on me. I don't. Um, oh, I should have asked for melatonin pills for my roommates. That's true. Ugh. Um, yeah, so another thing is because Jonah has Bible study tomorrow night uh, or tomorrow afternoon, I think. So Jonah wanted to like pick me up at 11 a.m. And I'm like, 11? Isn't that a little early? So he's like, well, 2 p.m. is fine too. If you if you really want. And I'm like, yeah, 2 p.m. would be better. And then I remember the tripling email. They said I have to return the keys and everything on uh, before 12 at noon. What the fuck? So I need to leave at 11.30. So now the plan is, I'm going to pack up literally everything, and um, I'm going to return the keys at 11.30, and then after that I'll bring everything into the public storage, and then finally move to the Airbnb. And then tomorrow, after moving to the Airbnb, I'll immediately head to Ralph's to start stocking up on food. Another thing is, originally I planned to make the move tomorrow at 6 p.m. So that I have a whole day for myself to do laundry, to clean up my bed sheets and my blankets or whatever. Um, but now, I don't. I can't. Which means that I'm not going to have lunch tomorrow here. I will probably have a very late lunch so the thing is, I still have half a box of Katage fried chicken and some um, bok choy. I'll finish that up, plus a can of Pepsi. And then, um, yeah, and then for morning, I have some cookies and a cream bun from Nijio Market. That's it. So originally, I wanted to do Ichiban Coco Curry House tomorrow as a final lunch. But I guess that's out of the question now. Um, and then I need to wake up insanely early tomorrow. This is why I'm going to have to go to bed at 4. So that I wake up at 8. And start, you know, fucking... Or 8.30. Start washing my bed sheets and everything. My pajamas. My electronics. And right now I'm going to pack a little more. Holy shit. I, I need to I need to clean all this up in 12 hours and I got to sleep in the middle too. So 
running late, of course. But anyways, I digress. I came back home today at 11 p.m. And I had my sushi dinner. Big meal, big feast. Pretty nice. Um, and then um, I wanted to film myself and I wanted to talk. So mm, this is my sushi, blah, blah. But um, thank God I didn't because it turns out both Ashley and Rachel are in their rooms. So Ashley came out halfway through the meal and just started talking to me. Again, it's so fucking crazy that my roommates are treating me nice and shit. It's so, like, weird. Because, I mean, in CMD it's different, but in here I'm in a different mode. Like, I have a different personality here almost. It's like, in, in this apartment I'm super shy and I just don't talk to people. But, yeah, it's, it's crazy. So, I, um... I spoke, uh, I spoke to Ashley, and Ashley's, I guess, hooking up with this hot, tall, rich Korean guy, um, and she's been stalking him on Snapchat, um, and, um, yeah, he's been stalking him on Snapchat. And found out that since afternoon at 12 today, he's been at the Portland, Oregon police station. Like one of the police stations there. And he's been there for like 12 hours already. And Ashley's really concerned. And I'm like, okay, that guy's arrested. Like how else do you explain this? But then he's like, no, what, what could he possibly do? And I'm like, okay, maybe he's assaulted. Maybe he got mugged or something. But there's no way he's stuck there for 12 hours. Maybe it's a visa issue or a passport issue. And then Ashley was like, then maybe he would be at the embassy. Why is he at the police station? And then we started coming up with these crazy conspiracy theories. And I know we're, at least for me, I'm coming up with those theories just for the fun. I'm not serious about them. But what if he's like a sex trafficker? What if he's... He works for the Korean mafia. What if he's like a North Korean spy, you know? And it's so funny. Like, what if this is part of the sort of surprise, you know? And then Rachel came out. And then us three started talking. And it was really, really funny. And Ashley also told me she stalked me a little bit. Like, she went through my Instagram. And looked through all my, like, short film trailers. And then even saw my YouTube channel, but... Like my Enoch Lie channel, not the one I'm actually doing. I will never reveal that shit to anyone. But it's cool that someone's stalking me. And then, um, Ashley, Rachel, and I talked about my hairstyle. And Ashley showed Rachel a photo of me from a long time ago when I had super short, spiky hair. Like back in 2021, when I was in the cat cafe with uh, Leah and Pink. And um, they're like, nah, nah, that's not it. That doesn't suit you at all. And I'm like, really? And then Rachel's like, yeah, I get it. But that's like a very like Hong Kong hairstyle. And that's like a very like every Asian guy has to go through that phase. And I'm like, yeah, that's that's true. That's a very typical standard hairstyle. And they said this long hair suits me and it makes gives me a very soft image. And I'm like, I don't want to be that soft though. But, I, but as I was saying, I was like holding my arm like this and Rachel was laughing at me like, Ooh, I'm a, I don't want to be too soft while I'm acting so soft. But that's sort of true, but that's also good. Like I should probably lean into my soft aesthetic because that's my personality. Because of how shy I am in real life, I think it's good to lean on this softness, but then I also want to be at least a little bit edgy, like soft with a touch of edginess. Same way how like I'm into, I'm really, really into girls who are aggressive and, you know, very cool, maybe a little sporty, sportsy, but with a dash of edginess, um... Like Leslie style, for example. It's really cool. 
But for me, it's the opposite. Like, instead of aggressiveness, it should be like, because if I want to be attracted to aggressive girls, then I should be the opposite and be a pacifist guy, you know? So it's a, not a bad aesthetic for me, I think. But yeah, and then at the end, Rachel invited me and Ashley to draw on her glass window in her bedroom, which is completely different from the last time I went in when it was Cindy's bedroom. Uh, this is so different, but it was nice in its own way. And it's crazy, like, she's actually living, living in here. Like, I live here as if this is just my Airbnb. I don't decorate my walls or anything. <laughs> Um, but for her, it's, she's really making it look nice and everything, and it's really cool. And I also mentioned to Ashley, like, oh, last year I spent my birthday alone. And Ashley was like, no, that's so sad. You know what? Next birthday, come back here and, like, you know, we'll throw a birthday party for you. And I'm like, really? And it's weird because I don't. I'm totally prepared to hang out by myself on my birthday because that's what I did last year. And before that, it's always with my parents because I have no friends. Um, even with Natalie and Cedric, they're always, it's September 7th, we're, we're at school. So I never really got the chance to have a birthday with friends not counting the birthday parties I have when I was five, six years old. But I've never really truly like celebrated birthday with friends. And Ashley's like, oh, celebrate with us. We'll buy you a cake. We'll drink. We'll watch a movie together. And I'm like, really? So that's really cool. Maybe I'll actually do that. Maybe I'll actually come back here. It's crazy because I've only known them for like less than two weeks. And some of the people at CMD, I've known them for a whole semester and I'm still like strangers to them. Like Benny, yeah, I, but I don't really trust Benny anymore after all that shit. <laughs> I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, me hanging out with Michelle on September 8th is a sort of a birthday hangout. I mean, me hanging out with Tova on September 8th. Our joint interviews will be September 8th as well. It's also sort of a birthday hangout, if you think about it. If you think about it, me walking to the bus stop with Pepper last year on my birthday is sort of a hangout, albeit unintentional. And hopefully I run into Cliff and Leslie as well on uh, September 7th. I'll definitely run into them, by the way. Um, I guess in that way... That and it's so fucking stupid because Leslie put my birthday on her phone, actually. So she knows. Maybe she's deleted it. She would be so malicious, though. I don't know. I really don't want to think about her anymore. Um, I made a few Instagram stories. And um, it's a bunch of screenshots of like what songs I've listened to on Spotify lately. One of the songs is Shoddy is a Smooth Operator. And Leslie liked that one, which is weird. I don't know if Leslie listens to Sade, but yeah. I don't know, I just really gotta move on from her. I low-key wanna go back to Hong Kong and find a Hong Konger girl, that is interesting. Especially given how many Hong Kongers I'm going to be meeting. So last night I called my mom and um, we had like a half an hour phone call and then she talked about how, oh, Fruit Chan is directing a new film in October and I know a producer there um, or one of the producers in the team and um, um, he said, I can PA on that set, I can observe and I can be a PA. And I'm like, yeah, that's interesting. I'm low-key fanboying, like, oh my god, the director, the writer-director of Made in Hong Kong and The Longest Summer, two absolutely amazing films. Like, Made in Hong Kong is in the top 
100 favorite films I've ever seen. Like, of course, I'm, I'm so down to, like, join his set. But at the same time, I don't want to be too surprised or anything because at the end of the day, my mom has connections with the film industry. And, um, you know, some of the people who have worked with my mom or, like, students of my mom are in pretty big media organizations now. Like, a producer I met in 2019, apparently in APM, Kun Tong, is apparently a co-founder of Pomedo, which is this dumb little media organization, but also the second largest media organization in Hong Kong right now. And then the other producer I met, um... In a restaurant, the producer who introduced me to Made in Hong Kong is apparently working with Louis Ku now, who is one of the biggest actors and stars in Hong Kong. So, I mean, yeah, it's nepotism, but also there are probably thousands of other people like me that is also at this distance from the center of the Hong Kong film industry spider web, you know? But it's cool that I, you know... PAing for a fruit chance set is really cool. I don't want to PA for like Johnny Toe or Wong Kar Wai. Nobody PAs for Wong Kar Wai. But PAing in a Johnny Toe set seems really stressful. For fruit chan, maybe it could be a fun experience. So I'm looking forward to that. It will also be really interesting because I feel like people will either look up to me like, oh my god, this guy studied in LA. Or discriminate against me like ooh, you're a cocky american educated person like we do things our way here in hong kong the real the you know the real man's way you know not like in la where everyone are pussies um because la really respects workers rights and the 12-hour turnaround and everything but apparently in hong kong they don't um it's probably a lot harsher in Hong Kong, but also systematically probably not as... I don't even know if grips are a thing in Hong Kong. <laughs> um, but yeah, looking forward to going back home. Miles wanted to call me, and we did have like a five-minute Discord call, but he fell asleep. He watched a very scary horror short film. And he's like, oh, it's so scary. I couldn't fall asleep. Can I call you? And I'm like, sure, but I have to pack. And then five minutes into the call, he's silent. So I'm assuming that he fell asleep. But yeah, anyways, I don't think I'll be doing the Amadeus movie review tomorrow. Because I'm going to be waking up early. And I'm going to pack, 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 pack. I don't have time to do reviews. Zero. And, um... Yeah, and um, yeah, I don't have that much to say for, about the movie anyways. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Um, and hopefully tomorrow I don't do any reviews at all. I don't watch any movies at all. I'm just going to move and then go to Ralph's stock up and then clean up and then just rest there hopefully the portable ac is ready otherwise i'm going to throw a fucking fit yeah that's it but it's so cool that at least i have friends in this room in this apartment where's the potter when you need him huh where's the pepper when you need him i think if potter wants to hang out with me on my birthday that's totally fine um I don't know, but it's not like a friend group, you know? It's not like the group of guys that you always hang out with. It's not the potato gang and the bean gangs, you know? I'm never really in a gang. At the end of the day, I'm not really in a gang. But nobody are really in a gang nowadays. There's a grip gang, but because they're the grips. But they don't hang out as a gang. I guess you could say that Jonathan and Tyler are in a gang. Or Tyler and Sidlali and Zach are in a gang. I mean, Liam, Ava, Trinity, and Jaden are a gang. They they are definitely a gang. I 
I don't know though. Gangs aren't really a thing here. So yeah, that's pretty much it.